Hello everybody. The purpose of the ballistic pendulum test method is to measure shear force required for the progress of a rupture in the fabric towards a single tear when a sudden force of a particular length is exerted. This test can be applied to both woven and non-woven fabrics, but it cannot be applied to knitted fabrics and woven flexible fabrics. Here, the device to be used is the ballistic pendulum device. There is a ballistic pendulum, a blade, sample holders and two bubble scales on this device. Before starting the test, it should be checked whether the bubble scales are in balance. The bubble scales should be brought into balance if they are not in balance. The device is placed on a table and there are start buttons on either side of the table. The start buttons allowing the ballistic pendulum to get loose make the test possible. The first thing to do for the preparation of test samples is to condition the specimen in standard atmospheric conditions. The conditioned samples are laid on a flat surface. When taking specimens, it is important not to take them from places too close to the edges. In addition, specimens must not be taken from wrinkled places and places where there are folding traces. The samples are cut at the weft and warp length from the sample laid on a flat surface. A sample drawing is done with the standard template. The dimensions of this template are 7.5 by 10 centimeters. The section seen here is 1.5 centimeters in width and 1.2 centimeters in height. During the drawing of the sample, the shear direction of the specimen, whose short edge is parallel to the warp, is towards the weft. Using a template, I'm drawing the sample in this way. The shearing direction of the sample whose short edge is towards the warp length is towards the weft length. Five test samples are drawn in this way. Test samples containing different warp and weft yarn must be drawn as to represent the whole fabric. We draw selvages as straight as possible when drawing the samples. We then open this notch also seen in the pattern.
Bunun için de sevgi numarasını yapıyorum. As you see, a weft and a warp sample are ready, just as seen in the pattern. I am creating five sets in this way. We are going towards the testing device in order to test the samples we have prepared. Before starting the test, we are checking whether the bubble scales on the device are in balance. Then the calibration of the device is done by measuring test weights as well as calibration weights. There are four pieces of calibration weight and four pieces of test weight. For the calibration process, we begin with A, which has the smallest weight. We are attaching the calibration weight to the testing weight. Then, we choose the testing weight on the device. The pendulum is released by pressing the start button on either side of the table under the device. The value read in this way is compared with the table values to see whether it is in the correct range. If it is in the correct range, it is considered that there are no problems with the calibration of the device. I'm repeating the same process for weight B. I'm adjusting the weight B on the screen of the device. I'm comparing the value read on the screen with the table value. Now, I'm selecting C on the screen. I also check D on the screen. As you see, testing weights gradually increase from A to D, and the shear strength also increases. Therefore, the more difficult a fabric is ripped, that is, the higher its resistance is, the greater the testing weight is. Lastly, I choose weight B on the device. And I read the value again. After completing the calibration process, we can begin to test our samples. Before testing the samples, we need to do a preliminary study to determine the testing weight. It is more advantageous to do this preliminary work with the D weight. Because weight D can tear fabrics that weight A, B and C cannot tear. I'm doing the preliminary study with a weft sample. I'm placing the sample in the sample holder in this way. Then, using this knife, I am opening a 2 cm notch. As weight D has already been selected on the screen, I release the pendulum by pressing the start button on two sides of the tray. In this way, I get a tear value. The value I read on the device 
will give an idea about which iron weight I have to use. I use weight A if the value is between 0 to 8 newtons. Weight B if it is between 8 to 16 newtons. Weight C if it is between 16 to 32 newtons. And weight D if it is between 32 to 64 newtons. As the obtained value is 15 0.07, I can test weft length using weight B. Before removing weight D, I can study a warp sample and determine its weight. I prepare the testing device and press the start button. The value obtained for warp is appropriate for weight C. I therefore infer that I can carry out the test by using weight B in the weft length and weight C for the warp length. I am inserting weight B. I'm placing a weft specimen into the sample holder jaws like this. I'm opening a 2 cm notch. Having inserted weight B, I'm now selecting B on the screen. And I press the start button. As you see, the sample has been torn. There are some clues indicating to us that the rupture process has been successfully realized. One of them is that it has been ruptured along a straight line. However, the yarn shift in the jaw or the slipping of the sample itself in the jaw shows us that the test has failed. On the other hand, the sample needs to be completely torn or there must remain no threads untorn before the rest comes to a complete conclusion. And finally, we must see that the rupture that took place is within the 1.5 cm width on the template. When we examine the sample, it is clear that the rupture is within the 1.5 cm width and that the test is successful. We repeat the same process for five warp samples and five weft samples. The arithmetic mean of these five values is the result of the test. If three of the results obtained have failed, then we accept that the test has failed.